Hi, welcome to What's Happening. Here are the top five stories. President of the African Development Bank, AFDB, Akimumi Adishino, says the federal government's decision to suspend duties and taxes on imported food commodities is depressing. On July 8th, Minister of Agriculture and Food Security, Abubakar Kiari, announced that duties, tariffs and taxes on the importation of maize, husk brown rice, wheat and cowpeas will be suspended through Nigeria's land and sea borders for 150 days. Kiari said the plan would ease the price hike of food items, adding that the government has adopted measures to be implemented in 150 days. However, speaking on the theme food security and financial sustainability in Africa, the role of the church, additional said the plan would only address short-term food price hikes in the country. He said the policy might jeopardize the significant effort and private investments made in Nigeria's agriculture sector. At number two, Four people were rescued after a section of a two-story residential apartment collapsed in Abuja Sunday morning with several people trapped in the rubble. This incident occurred just a day after a school building collapsed in Plateau State, which claimed the lives of 22 pupils and left 132 people injured, previously used as a hotel. The collapsed building consisted of 45 self-contained rooms before being converted into residential units. The FCT Emergency Management Department, FMD, had received a distress call at about 6.45 a.m. Two of the rescued victims were taken to the Kubwa General Hospital. The Acting Director General of FMD, Florence Wenegeme, has urged developers to adhere strictly to building codes and refrain from using substandard materials. At number three, Africa's richest man, Aliko Dungute, says Nigeria National Petroleum Company Limited, NMPCL, now owns a 7.2% stake in the Dangote Petroleum Refinery and not a 20% stake as initially announced before the inauguration of the facility at the Lekki Free Trade Zone. Dangote, who made it known at a press briefing on Sunday, said the NNPC stake dropped to 7.2% over the company's failure to pay the balance of their shares, which was due in June. The NNPC confirmed the development in a statement late Sunday a spokesman for the company says the NMPCL periodically assesses its investment portfolio to ensure alignment with the company's strategic goals. At number four, former U.S. President Donald Trump is fine after he appeared injured Saturday following gunshots that were reported at his campaign rally in the state of Pennsylvania. Trump was seen with a bloodied right ear as he was being whisked off the stage. According to footage on social media, his spokesperson Stephen Chong said the former president is fine. U.S. President Joe Biden called on Americans to stand together following an assassination attempt against President Donald Trump, saying politics must never be a literal battlefield. The Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI, identified Thomas Matthew Crooks as a suspected shooter in the former U.S. President Donald Trump's assassination attempt. 20-year-old Crooks is from Pennsylvania, where the former president was hit during his campaign rally in Butler Township. And at number five, Spain defeated England 2-1 Sunday in Berlin to claim the European Championship. The result was its fourth tournament victory, breaking a tie with Germany for the most in history. Nico Williams, Spain's winger on the left flank, scored the opener for his nation in the early minutes of the second half. English substitute Cole Palmer scored an equaliser outside the penalty area. In the 86th minute, Spain attacking midfielder Mikel Oyazabal, who was subbed in the second half, scored the winning goal after Spanish left-back Marc Cucurella's low cross into the penalty box. Spain previously won in 1964, 2008 and in 2012. The last two titles coming either side of their triumph at the 2010 World Cup during the golden era of Xavi Hernandez, Xavi Alonso and Andre Iniesta. And that's all for now. See you next time on What's Happening.